morning to everyone. We're Tim Smart Locks. Uh, my name's Tim Locks. I'm a PUT here in the Academy from Canberra, but don't let that bother you. I actually grew up in Queensland and I still buried the Moronics. My name is Gavin Lombardi, this is Mary Fusek. We are MBA candidates from the University of Arizona in the US. And until this week, we didn't know who the Moronics were, but we are happy to root for them anyway. <laughs> we're the other half of this collaboration, and we're here to ensure that Smart Blocks is truly a global business, but also a business that has a positive impact at the community level, especially here in Brooklyn. So we're here to talk to you today about our exciting first product, Solar Blocks. For me, this journey began about 10 years ago when I was in the call uh, installing solar energy systems in remote villages. These villages had absolutely no electricity. So even a small solar system was able to absolutely transform their lives. We're talking schools being able to run classes at night and medical outposts suddenly being able to operate at night with proper theater lights. Before that, they were operating by candlelight. But getting the solar systems there was a challenge. We had to get panels and wiring and mounting and batteries and all the people to, set, to assemble it into a remote region across a rugged terrain. And that was a real barrier. What they really needed was something that was simple, deployable, and scalable. The technology wasn't there at the time. But that's where the seed for solar works started. Fast forward a decade or so, uh, I spent a lot of time working uh, in, in government, looking at uh, energy options and strategic supply chains for fuel. And it really started to blow my mind just how much money we were spending trucking fuel around, particularly for disaster relief, for mobile expeditions, and for remote communities. And when you talk to the people who actually use these portable generators and such, they're not opposed to the idea of solar energy or renewable energy to meet their needs. It's just that it doesn't currently meet their operational needs. What they need is a system that is uh, easy to use, anyone can operate, that can be packed up and set up quickly, and that is entirely scalable for whatever they're doing. The other lens that we've looked at this through is climate change. As we start to look at what climate change means to us, we think more, more natural disasters, more frequency, higher intensity, and we start to look at the impact that that's going to have on our electrical infrastructure. And that's driving, uh, I suppose, the technology sector to what we're calling PICO infrastructure, which is being able to deliver power technology solutions to people at an individual level so they can solve their own energy needs. And that is what SolarBox does. SolarBox integrates all of the components of the solar energy system into a single product, a product that is simple, deployable, and scalable. By simple, we mean you just switch it on, plug in your appliance, whether it's 5 volt or 240 volt uh, residential AC, and off you go. It's by deployable. It's got a rugged exterior which can be stacked, uh, it can bounce around in the back of the truck. Uh, it's got a frame at the back that can uh, be set up and packed up in minutes, it's installed on a roof or in a field. It can be pre charged before deployment. And by scalable, well, that's why we call it a blocks, because you simply click more together to get extra capacity. We've also tied in internal sensors to allow us to have uh, yeah, remote monitoring, so you can monitor your power usage, uh, your power generation, and your battery state. But importantly, uh, that, that's just an optional extra. If you don't have an internet, totally fine. Remember, a solar box is simple, and as we call it, as simple as you need, but as smart as you want. So where do you prepare? Well, we want to take this from a design and prototyping exercise into a pilot program. A strategy for that pilot program is a pilot program that will actually test our value proposition, simple, deployable, scalable, with our customer segments. We also want to test our business model and specifically our micro-manufacturer model, which we'll talk more about later. In terms of those customer segments, we recognize that each one of them is going to have slightly different takes on the benefits of solar blocks, as you can see here. Developing countries being more interested in the simple aspects, off-grid communities, the scalable aspects, mobile expedition, the deployable aspects, and so on. The other thing that we've done with our pilot program is we've made it aligned with our, uh, the three pillars of our value proposition. It is entirely scalable as well. By that, we mean we can scale our pilot program depending on the level of funding we have. For $100,000, first prize in the GPC, if you would, 
where it will set up all the back end business operations, design certification, quality systems to be ready to deploy our first micro manufacturing. For an additional $75,000, we can deploy that first micro manufacturing into a remote area of Queensland and Sorry, I apologize. Into uh, southeast Queensland, and we can produce our first two sets of solar blocks, which we plan to deliver to mobile expeditions. And by the way, we've actually been in contact with Geological Survey Queensland, who put us in, in, in contact with a company who's ready to take two sets of these uh, solar blocks and deploy them into sites in far west and far north Queensland. So that is a ready to go pilot. For a digital 75, we build more solar blocks and we'd like to deploy those uh, with SES units, uh, ideally in ACT and in Southeast Queensland. And if we can get another 250, well, that's where the real exciting stuff happens. That's where we deploy a micro manufacturing into a remote region, which comes with all the benefits of local jobs, uh, local skills, and uh, benefits to that local economy. Plus, we're going to produce 80 solar blocks in the community. So, where to from here? Commercialization. A commercialization strategy, again, comes down to our three pillars, simple, deployable, scalable. And where that strategy has driven us is towards what I referred to earlier, the micro-manufacturer model. Now what a micro-manufacturer is, or what our business model is rather, is setting up a network of small businesses that will assemble and distribute the solar blocks in the regions, rather than centralized manufacturing and centralized distribution. The great thing about this model is that the bulk of the business, or the density of the business, if you would, in terms of jobs and in terms of assets, is actually in the micro manufacturers, which are out in the regions, out in the communities. We call that shared value. It's shared value because it's local jobs, it's local skills, it's local economic benefits, plus we also get to avoid the cost and environmental impact of centralized distribution. At the same time, solar blocks, or sorry, rather smart blocks, the business benefits from being able to keep our business model simple, do what we do best, and use the micro manufacturers for assembly. We get to keep our business deployable. We avoid the cost and complexity of having large warehouses and inventory and manufacturing um, uh, sectors. And we get to keep our business scalable. We are entirely scalable with the business uh, conditions that we're facing today. Now, if you think about those micro manufacturers, the other point I'd like to add is essentially anybody with a space the size of a double parked garage and some practical skills has the ability to become a micro manufacturer. It's that simple. So, not only does our product put power in the hands of people so they can solve their own energy needs, but our business model is about putting local jobs, local, uh, sorry, putting jobs, skills, and benefits into our local communities. So now I'm going to let you uh, have a chat with Mary, who can take you through some of the underlying analysis that's got us where we are. Okay. Thank you, Tim. So the first thing that I wanted to, to touch on today was where we are positioned in the market. Solar Blocks has a very unique value proposition that no one else currently has uh, similarly. So if you look at this uh, industrial or the, the industry mapping here, we have high capacity, high capability, and hard to use, low capability, and easy to use. So you see the residential and commercial systems are highly capable, but are hard to use. And you have these small sort of foldable panels that have really low capability, but are easy to use. And this is where solar blocks come in. We are highly capable, easy to use, PICO infrastructure. <coughs> And what's important to note is that the residential and commercial sectors are already fiercely competitive. That's why what we're doing is we're not chasing after the existing market. We're creating a new market that had been traditionally ignored. Let's take a look at our customer segments that we touched on a little bit earlier. We have our developing countries, the off-grid community, the mobile expeditions, and the emergency services. Let's look at developing countries just to start here. So what we know is that about 25% of this population is without access to power. That's 1.9 billion people. If we could achieve just 1% penetration with five solar blocks each, that's 95 million solar blocks. That's a huge potential market there. Let's think a little bit more, more locally here. Let's look at Queensland specifically and all the applicable customer segments. If we can achieve uh, an average of 10% penetration, 
That's a total of 210 solar blocks. Australia as a whole, 880,000 solar blocks, excuse me. So there's, and then if we look internationally, we've got some huge numbers here, huge potential, and we have a lot of space to grow. You may be asking, how are we going to reach these markets? Well, it's a really simple, really simple strategy that we've developed. The micro manufacturing network, they're in the communities. They know the region and they're able to boost that community buy-in. With the digital content marketing strategy, we're going to have a whole strategy to make sure that the consumers build brand awareness and generate interest. And then we're also gonna manage strategic relationships with some government organizations and NGOs just to ensure that our partnerships in these crucial areas are maintained. So now let's go through the team that's going to take us there. So these are the three team members that you see here today. Catherine and I are part of the marketing and business strategy team. Whereas Tim, Tim is phenomenal. He is the sole inventor of solar blocks. He is a professional engineer. He has experience in program management, and he's worked in an environment of delivering highly technical, complex projects in the defense force with multiple high stakes key stakeholders. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. We have a large technical network across Australia that is willing to, to step up and start and support this pilot program should we begin today. So now where do we go from here? Yeah. Thanks, Tim. So we have developed three horizon model. That first horizon is establishing an official micro manufacturer in Queensland and delivering our pilot program. That second horizon is expanding throughout the Australian market and that's about commercialization. Now the third horizon is really saturating that Australian market and then expanding internationally. So in terms of our finances, our finances and our business structure are simple. We have low fixed operating costs and solar blocks are built when orders are placed and paid for. Our finances are also deployable. Our offices are entirely online. We work with a network of people around the world and they can work from anywhere. Finally, our finances are scalable because everything about the business can scale. The people, the, the manufacturing capacity, and our time. So we make our money through solar block sales. We take in those orders, manu micro manufacturers build those orders, and they have three options in those products. So we have a traveler, an expedition, and an outpost model. Now today I'm really going to talk about that expedition model because that's the model we plan to deploy in our pilot program because it offers a balance in our size and capability options. Now, you can see that the expedition model retails for about $1,200. Now after that, the micro manufacturers are paid for their labor and profit, and you can see that the revenue to smart blocks for each expedition model sold is about $126. And what's important about this model is that the micro manufacturer makes more than we do. And that's important because like Tim said, the density of our business is in the micro manufacturers. And because of that shared value model, we wanna make sure that this is financially beneficial within their local communities. So, uh, for everybody's favorite part, I know it's the financial projections. So we've looked at three different financial projection scenarios in our commercialization phase, so this that second horizon that we talked about. Now, we plan to deploy that pilot program in 2018, which is why everything that you see here actually starts in 2019. So this scenario represents the zero uh, additional investments in that commercialization phase. And over those three years, we expect that we can sell 40,000 solar blocks. Now keep in mind that it's just 20% of the 210,000 blocks we thought we could sell into Queensland alone. And what this does is it produces $5.3 million in revenue, which equates to $2.3 million in profit just across those three years. And again, without any additional investment at that commercialization phase. Now, in a scenario with an additional $250,000 investment to help with commercialization, really what we have is more. We have more micro manufacturers, more production capacity, that means more sales, more profit, and more benefit to the local communities sooner. And with an initial, or with an investment in that commercialization phase of an additional $500,000, really, again, it's just more. So what does this mean? We expect that with a micro manufacturing network of 50 micro manufacturers, 
we can sell 185,000 solar blocks in Australia and internationally. And remember, that's less than 85% of that 210,000 blue card that we could sell just in Queensland alone. And what this means is a revenue of 20 uh, is a revenue of 23 million dollars and an expected profit of 11.4 million dollars just across those three years. So let's talk about risk. We think about risk in terms of risk appreciation because we've undertaken iterative risk assessments at every part of this development. So it's embedded in our strategy from the very beginning. So what kind of risks are there? There are risks in capability and in performance. We've dealt with many of those in our prototyping. Really, the rest of that is exactly what that pilot program is for. There are risks in distribution. That's why we've gone with this micro manufacturing model that puts the uh, product assembly near the end consumer. There are risks in funding. We know that changes in the social, the economic, the political climate can impact market conditions. And that's why we've made our business model scalable so that it can respond to changes in those market conditions. There are risks in our quality. So all of our micromanufacturers will be held to an ISO 9001 uh, quality management system. Now, how are we going to do that? We have more systems engineers on our team than we even know what to do with. And systems engineering and quality management is what those guys do. So we really think that our primary risk at this point in this product is about competition. And how are we going to deal with that? First, we have a first mover advantage. This gives us a temporal advantage because we are the first product of this kind out in this market. Next, we plan to convert our provisional patent to a full patent, and we have already trademarked the solar box name. And finally, we have an ecosystem of our micro manufacturers and our end users, and an entire ecosystem is incredibly difficult to imitate. So, we told you a little bit about what we've done. Where we're at now, and really that next big step, is to deliver that pilot program. So let's step back a little bit and talk about the kind of impact that a business model like Smart Blocks could have. You may remember that in September, Puerto Rico was hit by Hurricane Maria that wiped out 95% of the island's electrical infrastructure. Now, one month later, 88%, that is 3 million people, were still without power at all. So what could solar blocks do in a situation like this? First, let's imagine that we can initiate crowdfunding campaigns that allows people to make small donations for a large impact. Now, as that money becomes available, you lock in a solar blocks order. Now, if that micro manufacturer doesn't have the production capability to deliver that order, what we're able to do is push that distribution to the next micro manufacturer in the solar blocks network. And the next, and the next, and the next. And now what we are able to deliver are thousands of solar blocks delivered right where they are needed. And what's more, if we were operating solar blocks right now, we would be able to deliver a micro manufacturer into Puerto Rico to deliver not only power, but also much needed economic stimulus. It's a secret idea. Show that it's entirely deployable. And from an investment, a crop of perspective, it's entirely scalable. You might be thinking financial projections, they're based on assumptions, and that's true. On a level, though, you sell 10,000 solar blocks, that's over a million dollars in revenue. So we know that no matter what happens, there's a market potential for this thing, and there's revenue for this thing. I'd also like to draw your attention to that peak of infrastructure again. When I think about my own preparedness for disasters, at the moment, I'm probably thinking a petrol generator for Bunnings and where am I going to fuel for? And that's kind of sad when you think about it because renewable energy can be in there. If we had solar blocks, well, all of a sudden, you have a few solar blocks ready to go, and that is your disaster plan. It's simple, it's deployable, it's scalable. It's solar blocks. Thank you very much for your time, Global Business Challenge. We hope you'll be part of our journey, and we'd like to invite any questions you might have.